Right, hello. What we're doing today is I'm giving a little rundown of my carnivorous plant terrariums, and specifically how to grow sphagnum moss in indoor culture. Okay, so first off I'll start off with the Michigan sphagnum, which I received from a Terraforms member known as Mass. As you can see, no medium whatsoever, just laid down in a glass terrarium. I keep it constantly wet with a little bit of water on the bottom, maybe about like an eighth of an inch or so. Then here, I use these little salsa cups I get at Moe's Southwestern Grill to culture specific species and locations. This one's Sphagnum Compactum from Surrey County, Virginia. So as you can see, doesn't like it too terribly wet, so I keep it just on the moist side. It grows very slowly. It can actually tolerate some dry outs, so you don't have to worry too much about it drying out if you take any vacations. Then over here, I have some stuff from Newport News where I attended college. So you get that in focus. There we go. And as you can see, that's a much more robust grower, taller stalks, fluffier. Then we have another location from Newport News, smaller, more compact growth. I have some Nepenthes ventricosa seeds in there. And then over here is another Surrey County location, which is Sphagnum Male. Also some Nepenthes ventricosa seeds in there, so that one is not currently up for trade or giveaway until the seeds germinate. But you can tell very nice colors on that one. It's kind of a mottled green and red. It can take a lot of varieties of water conditions. Again, no medium in any of these, just straight sphagnum growing in there. This one, I have no clue what it is, but it's found in Caroline County on one of Meadowview's rented preserve areas with the more, uh, bleh, northernmost Saracenia purpurea, or purple pitcher plant population in Virginia. Only two plants were mating. This stuff was growing in a stream, so it takes a lot of water. And you can tell much darker coloration kind of a burgundy center of it. Really nice. Hopefully that stuff will grow fairly quickly and will be in propagation soon. Up for trades. Then here I have some Nepenthes ventrata and uh, Miranda cuttings that are currently taking in some of the Michigan sphagnum. So that's X is an antifungal agent and maintains water. And then here's my Highland setup. 10 gallon terrarium. There's a, uh, this is actually a gift from our web designer, Mike Smith. This isn't going to be huge. It's Nepenthes Naga from Sumatra. Only about a year old now. And then behind it, we have a two-year-old Nepenthes Lavicola seedling, also from Mike. You can see very lush sphagnum in there. I think it's a tropical New Zealand species. I'm not quite sure, but there's two kinds growing in there. It dried out a little bit when I... Had went down to Newport News for the weekend, but you can see very nice colors on the pictures. It's close to being mature, not a too terribly big species. And then over around the back, we have the infamous cushion sphagnum. So you can see, it's like a pillow. I'm keeping it fairly wet so it grows fast. This, in, this one's in high demand, so I have quite a bit of that one. It'll be going outside soon. And let's see if I can get a close up on one of these for you guys. There we go. Long arm capillaris seedlings. Tiny. And then there's a display setup I'm working on for Utricularia graminifolia. So you'll be able to see the root system in the water. And then we have Caroline County Sarsenia purpurea. This population is pretty much extirpated and wiped out from its site in Reedy Creek Bog. It was sprayed with herbicide this spring, so pretty much 80% of the plants are dead. And the only chance for survival of the genotype is through cultivation. So I have some seedlings growing, as you can see. They are not that big. Where's my hand? There it is. So, still tiny. Then back over to the intermediate lowland setup. I have two more of them that I transplanted to free up the pot because they grew much more quickly than I thought. And we also have some open pollinated Saracenia flava, flava seedlings. 
So we'll see what those turn out like. And then from all of Keith all the way in Hawaii, we have Nepenthes maxima Lake Poso dwarf variety, growing rather nicely, working on a what should be a fairly robust large pitcher soon. Some ferns growing with it. And then Nepenthes burkii, one of my personal favorites. Working on a new pitcher as well, still small, but looking very promising. And then over in the Drosera section, we have Pygmy Sundews, so that's Rosiana. Very small, can grow fairly compactly. Let's see if I can pull some macro magic for you guys. There we go. Tiny little guys, but really cool looking. And then up here we have Drosera Alicia. Not too happy for me right now, I think it needs a bit wetter conditions. And then, neat. Drosera Venusta. Progressively getting larger. And then over in the back, we have Spatulata acting like a weed. Because I got a lot of it. So that may be added to the MetaView catalog soon. And then... Those were supposed to be Drosera Brumania. I'm not seeing too many of them right now. It's mostly ca uh, Capensis. So we'll see how that turns out. And then, of course, the ever-invasive Drosera Binata variant Multifida. That thing grows like a weed, and it gets another pot. So, there you have it. That's my indoor setup. I'll move to the outdoor setup soon. One thing I forgot. We have the culture pot of Urticularia graminifolia with a nice little blue flower. That's the most pigmented one I've had so far, and I love it. So there we go, indoor setup. Okay, so here are the outdoor setups. There we have another specimen of Sphagnum compactum, also from Surrey, different area in the hunt club though. And you can see another tuft of it there. So you can see it grows very differently outdoors than it does indoors, especially when it has a medium to grow into. The key to outdoor Sphagnum culture is definitely keeping it wet. Sphagnum likes moisture. There's uh, another species, no idea what that one is. There's some more of it around here, this side. You see, so that stuff I think spontaneously generated. And the stuff will slowly spread, which means the fly traps and sundews won't get overwhelmed by it, which I like. And over here, We have some more, just need to shoot through the pine straw. More sphagnum compactum. There's a nice tuft of it right here. No contamination. As soon as I get over. There we go, so you can see, almost doesn't even resemble sphagnum, but it definitely is. If you pull it up, it does the same growth structure. Just very tight heads. So, there you go. Outdoor sphagnum culture.